Let's rank some waiver wire pitchers and get you updates on bullpens and injuries next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Thursday, May 27th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Chris Towers. And let's rank these waiver wire starting pitchers. Chris, Luis Garcia, six innings of one-run ball against the Dodgers on Wednesday. James Caprillion, seven shutout against the Mariners. And Merrill Kelly has now delivered three straight quality starts. How would you rank those three? I think Luis, Cast- or Luis Garcia excuse me, has to be number one. Um not just because he's pitched really well this season, including last night against the Los Angeles Dodgers, but also because he got some good news for his chances of staying in the rotation Wednesday with the news that Christian Javier was moving to the bullpen and Lance McCullers was going on IR. I know the Astros have a couple of pitchers coming back from uh, the injured list within the next week or so, including Framber Valdez early next week, but it does seem like Luis Garcia's spot in the rotation is safe. So he's only 43% rostered. I think that needs to be higher. Um, after that, I think I would actually go Merrill Kelly over James Caprillion. He's been really good for his last six starts. It's 36 and two thirds innings in those six starts, 39 strikeouts, a 3 2 5 ERA, including that 12 strikeout gem uh, against the Dodgers last week. Yep. And Merrill Kelly is in line for a two-star week next week up against the Mets and at the Brewers. So two great matchups as well. Merrill Kelly is only 25% rostered. Let's get you some bullpen updates. And for the Minnesota Twins on Wednesday, Hansel Robles picked up his third save. Both he and Taylor Rogers had been used in three of the last four days. Robles is still just 20% rostered. Chris, does that number need to be much higher? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if in your head-to-head points leagues, Hansel Robles is necessarily someone you need to add because even when he's doing well, he, he's not, um, you know, overpoweringly dominant reliever. But certainly in any Roto or Categories league where you're chasing saves, yeah, 20% is way too low. Jake Diekman for the Oakland A's recorded four outs and picked up his sixth save. He is 43% rostered. I think uh, similar to Hansel Robles, that number probably can be higher. It seems that Diekman and Lou Trevino are basically sharing that role, as we're going to talk yeah. about with basically all of these relievers. Uh, for the Tigers, Michael Fulmer was used in the eighth inning to face 9-1-2 and two in the order for Cleveland. Gregory Soto was used in the ninth, and he picked up his fifth save. Detroit's not really a great team. Uh, it looked like Michael Fulmer was starting to climb into that role, but he did face the top of the order. This one's interesting, Chris. The Tampa Bay Rays, they went with newly acquired J.P. Fireisen, who is 8% rostered in the ninth inning. Instead of Diego Castillo, who hadn't pitched since May 22nd, J.P. Fireisen actually blew the save. He allowed a game-tying home run. Is this just Tampa Bay being Tampa Bay? Are they back? That would be my guess. I mean, it's hard to know exactly you know, whether... Diego Castillo was unavailable or something like that. But yeah, I think you would probably want, um, you know, I think Diego Castillo is probably still most likely to get the next save, but it's probably inching towards Diego Castillo 50%, the field 50%. Mm -hmm. And for the Giants, much like these other bullpens, this is just a trend in baseball. This is the way things are going now. Jake McGee was used in the eighth. Tyler Rogers was used in the ninth inning for his sixth save of the season. So it seems like they are going very matchup based there in San Francisco as well. Tyler Rogers is 48% rostered. That number should be higher in categories leagues. Some injury updates on Wednesday. Marcelo Zuna is expected to miss five to six weeks after dislocating two fingers on his left hand. And we mentioned some of the Astros news, but Framber Valdez will make his season debut on Friday against the Padres. He's only 69% rostered. Go out and add him if he's available. Jake Odorizzi will start on Saturday. He's 30% rostered. He's more of only a deeper league ad for now. Uh, we had a bunch of Yankees news. Corey Kluber has a subscapular strain and will be shut down for at least four weeks. And just tough news coming off the no-hitter. Nice bounce-back season so far for Corey Kluber. Yeah. The Yankees did announce that Davey Garcia, Chris, has been recalled and will start this weekend against the Tigers. He's only 28% rostered. Where would he rank along that group of pitchers we brought up earlier? I might. I could see ranking him as high as second behind Luis Garcia, just on the, you know, he he's young and he could be anything. 
uh, mindset, but control has been a real issue for him dating back to 2019. It actually wasn't an issue for him in his major league debut last season. I think he made five or six starts, uh, but he got hit really hard. So, you know, it's a question of whether he can put both of those together. I think he has real potential, but, um, you know, certainly not a must roster player. Last but not least, Luke Voigt has a grade two oblique strain, which is something he began to feel over the weekend on Saturday. It seems like once DJ LeMahieu is back, he'll be playing at first base, Rugnet Odor at second, Glaber Torres at short, and Gio Urshela at third. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.